Many people have been led to believe that, although the Bible is full of interesting stories, its history is mythological and made up, with no archaeological support. This series is dedicated to those who need help dislodging that dubious claim. Welcome back, I'm excited to have you. We learned in an earlier video about the Tel Dan Steel, and about the deaths of two kings, one of Israel and one of Judah, and that Hazael, king of, king of Aram, takes credit, and that the Bible gives credit to Jehu. And you may remember that in 2 Kings chapter 9, a young prophet takes Jehu aside and anoints him as king in an inner chamber, and then leaves. And when Jehu's friends find out, they blow trumpets and declare him king. Jehu's reign was bloody. He was a complicated guy. You may remember that he rides into Jezreel and demands the palace eunuchs throw down Jezebel. Um, once in control of Samaria, he summons the worshippers of Baal, pretending to want to offer a big sacrifice to him. But then he locks them up and kills them all. He then destroyed their idols and their temple and turned it into a latrine. This leads me to talk about the Black Obelisk of Shalmaneser. That sounds so epic. This big black obelisk was discovered in 1846 in Nimrod, Iraq. This monument is designed to honor the king of Assyria, Shalmaneser III. The obelisk has four sides, and on each side there are five rows of carved panels. So that's 20 panels total. And around the panels is cuneiform inscription describing tribute um, and what's going on in the pictures. Typically going to be a submissive king who is um, honoring and paying tribute to Shalmaneser. Now one of these panels is super interesting. It reveals a bearded Semite in royal dress, and he's bowing his face to the ground before Shalmaneser. And there are Hebrew servants standing behind him. And the cuneiform text around it reveals the tribute bearer, and it talks about his gifts. And it says, The tribute of Jehu, son of Omri, I received from him silver, gold, a golden bowl, a golden vase with pointed bottom, golden tumblers, golden buckets, tin, a staff for a king, and spears. Jehu fought with the king of Aram a lot and lost many battles to him. And this picture may suggest that Jehu was submitting himself to Shalmaneser III as a big, powerful ally against Aram since Shalmaneser was king of Assyria. And it is dated precisely to 841 BC. The Assyrian kingdom kept very close records of everything that happened. They named each year after a certain official, and they even made note of certain solar eclipses. So astronomers have been able to confirm the dating of the Assyrian records, and um, historians are confident that this black obelisk is dated back to 841 BC. So again, we see confirmation that Jehu is the king that the Bible said he was and the timing that it says he was. And it seems to confirm the kind of rule Jehu had as described by the Bible. I hope this was interesting and encouraging to you. But remember, the question is not, can we prove everything in the Bible? The question rather should be, where there is archaeological evidence, does it in fact support biblical witness or not? Thank you for watching.